Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Dice City, which as you might guess from the name is a game all about building cities with dice, which is what we're going to be doing today. I'm be showing you what the game is all about. And you can see I've already got set up here as a two-player game. This is my city, this will be Jen's city, and everybody's starting city is the exact same. We have all these spaces on the outskirts that generate lumber and stone and ore, which we use to build new buildings that are randomly placed out here, drawn from this deck. We've also, you know, so our outskirts is all, where all our, you know, the forests and the mountains and whatnot that we can generate goods or resources. And then in the interior here, we've got like, well, we've got a couple of small houses that can generate victory points. And we've got some travelers who let us re-roll dice. And then we've got a whole bunch of potential militia. We can raise an army to basically fight off all these bandits and score some victory points, or for feeling sassy, we can even attack our neighbors in the neighboring city and steal stuff from them or bust up their stuff. So, I'm gonna be demonstrating a little bit of all of this today, and the game starts out with everybody rolling their dice. Okay, so, and now I have to assign my dice. I've got a blue two, so that goes into my blue row, column number two, and that means I'll be able to activate this small house to get a victory point. And I say I got a white two, and I got a yellow two, and I got a black, Six and I got a red one. So these dice tell me what I can do. I can get, on my turn. I'll be able to get some lumber, some ore. Wow! I'll be able to get one of each of the three resources. I have an army strength of one potentially, and I could get one victory point. But now that's what I could potentially do. But there are several other things you can do with your dice as well as the spaces they land on. But first of all, let's go on ahead. I, I think I, did I, I'll just roll die again. Whatever. Okay. So she's got a blue three and a yellow one and a a black five and a red five, red five, standing by, and a white four. Okay, so I can see what it is Jen potentially has available to her, and she can see what I've got. I'm the start player, so let's get going. Now then, uh, the first thing you do on your turn is, well, you uh, use your dice. You activate your dice. And now the simplest thing is just to do whatever the spaces are, like I talked about. I get one military strength, I get one of each resource, I get one victory point. But there's a few other things you can do with your dice instead. Instead of just pulling this off here to get one lumber, I could pull this off to basically pass with it, which lets me get one of these little hourglasses. And if I ever have two hourglasses, I can use them for one of several different powers. So I can start saving up hourglasses. Because sometimes a die will land in a place where I just don't want to do that power right now. That was a wasted die. Well, don't worry, because you can always just trade it in for an hourglass, and once you've got two of them, that can come in really handy. But there's several other things we can do with our dice. Now, the most obvious thing you can do with your dice is use the location beneath the die and resolve its ability. That's pretty straightforward. But instead, you can um, move another die to an adjacent space on the same row. So if I didn't want this lumber, I could say, take this, not use it to get lumber, not use it to get a pass token, but I could spend this die to move any of my other dice one space left or right. So if I, so I've got one militia. If I wanted two militia, I could say, oh, to heck with this victory point. I'll move this over here, and now I've got two military power. So you can give up dice to be able to move other dice. You can discard a die, and that lets you, you know, or again, you'll use any of these dice to trash four of the eight buildings that are available, because maybe there's just no buildings out here that you want, but you really want to build this turn, but you know, you've got resources that don't match these, you can get rid of four of them, any four you want, and draw four different ones. Now, bear in mind, you can only do that once per round. If you draw the new ones and you still don't like what you get, you can't like trash a, or discard another die to get four more. You can only do that once per round. You can, um, oh, and you can use a die to reactivate any building that's been busted up, i.e. deactivated, anywhere in your city. And then finally, like I said, you can basically pass. Do nothing with your die and instead get a pass token, the little hourglass. Although you can only get one hourglass per round. So that's all the stuff, and I'm going to do five actions, some combination of all that stuff. Now, honestly, this is a... Well, the interesting thing is one militia by itself won't do any good for me at all. Right now, I need to have at least three militia because that would give me enough strength to defeat these bandits, which would score me two points. Now, alternatively, if Jen had already built some buildings, like say Jen had built this bazaar and she had put it over here, if I had a military strength of three, I could trash Jen's bazaar, which would score me one victory point, because that's what it says on here, and Jen can't use her bazaar anymore until she spends a die to reactivate it. So I can attack that way. And if Jen had any you know, goods lying around, I could spend two military strength to steal one. 
So those are the options of this militia. And one militia by itself is completely useless. And right now, two militia is good if you want to steal something from your neighbor, but otherwise you need pretty much at least three militia to be able to go after a bandit or go after a weak building belonging to your um, other player. So one militia by itself, not so great. So I think what I'm going to do is this die, I am just going to pass with it. So. I've got an hourglass. All right, and, I'm, and once I have two hourglasses, I can spend them on my turn, on any turn, to get one resource of my choice, to increase my army strength by one, or to force all other players to reroll one die of my choice, which is a particularly evil thing you can do. Like if you know so, uh, somebody on their turn, they rolled this, hooray! Oh, hooray! I got exactly what I wanted, and you know, and they activated the building they really wanted, as an example. Oops. Gen all right. um, then I could say on my turn. Well, you know what? You got to re-roll, and you have to re-roll that die that was perfect for you. So that's a little bit of kind of very nasty sneaky take that that you can use for these hourglasses. But if you don't want to be nasty sneaky, you can just use these hourglasses to get extra goods or extra military strength, maybe to fight some bandits. Who knows? But anyway, so I've used my first die. I've got four more dice to use. I think for these other dice, I will just go on ahead. I will, um, at my small house, I will get one victory point. And so there's my first victory point, and you put it face down because over you, you won't reveal your final score until the end of the game. So you just accumulate more and more stuff. Although right now everybody knows that this is a one, but all right. So and I will go on ahead and I will get one lumber, one ore, and one stone. I'll just get one of each. That's not too bad, right? And so, oops, uh, where's, oh, there we go. Ore and stone. So. I got an hourglass, and I got a victory point, and I got one of each. So I'm pretty happy with that as a start. Now that's the first part of my turn. First of all, you use your dice. Then the second part is, if you have any army strength, if you activated any militia, or catapults, or watchtowers, or whatever, any military spaces, you now take your army strength and spend it however you like. To attack bandits, to attack player towns, to steal stuff from players, any combination you want. If you've got like seven military strength, you might attack this bandit for four and then destroy um, you know, a, a player's building for three. You might, or, or you might take out a bandit and another bandit, who knows. But as it is, in this turn, I got no military strength because I passed on my militia. So I'm skipping the attack step. Now we move on to the, um, to the resource step, or what's it called, the building and trade step. Because now in this step, I can use the resources I've got on hand to either, or again, in any combination I want, build any of these buildings that are out, you know, the ones that have come out randomly, plus the preset ones that are always here every game, and or ship stuff overseas with these trade ships. So at any time, if I happen to have two wood, two stone, and two ore, I could ship it away and get five points. And the big mama, there's only one of these in the game, this trade ship, if I have four of each resource, that's 20 points. Which you may think is a game winner, but it's really hard to get all those resources. You pretty much have to give up a lot of other forward motion to do it. But anyway. So I don't have enough resources to be able to do any of the trades, but I probably, chances are, I can build something. Let's take a look at what is on offer in the market. Now, there will always be this um, regular army, a quarry, a mine, and a lumber mill. These are always available. A uh, quarry costs two stone, a lumber mill costs two lumber, a mine costs two ore, and these are basically better versions of the resource generating spots I already have. So if I, you know, if I had two ore, I could buy this mine, and the interesting thing is, it's not like I only put it on a cave. It's, I mean, I could upgrade this cave into a mine, but I'm not limited by that. I could say, you know, to heck with it. I'm going to get these travelers out of town. I could put this mine smack dab in the center of town if I wanted. I can replace any any space with a new card. And um, you know, so maybe I really, um, you know, and um, you know, maybe I don't want to involve myself with a lot of army attacking. I can just go on ahead and say, goodbye, militia. You've been replaced with a mine. And, um, and that means in the future, if I land on this space, instead of getting one ore, like these caves, I get two ore. All right. And let's see. So I could buy any of those, although right now I would need um, two ore, two stone, two wood, and I don't have them, or I've got one of each. So that means I'm going to have to come down here and buy one of these things. Right now, I could afford a grand statue, which costs an ore and a stone. 
That's not a good time to build this though, because the special thing about the statue is when you build this, if you have excess stone or ore, you can spend that as well to get extra victory points. By default, building a statue is worth two, but building this could be worth up to five if you have extra excess goods. I don't have a lot of excess goods, so I'm not going to build that. But I got to admit, I'm very tempted to buy this bazaar, which would cost me my lumber and my ore. And that means in the future, when I land on this, I get one of each. So I get three goods off of one space. The space is also worth one victory point for me at the end of the game. Uh, for Jen to attack it, she would have to use three militia to basically disable this, my bazaar, so I can't use it. But here's another thing. To be able to use the bazaar and get one of each of the resources, I have to deactivate this thing myself. Which means um, after I've deactivated I'd have to use another die to activate it again. So effectively, it takes me two dice one to de or you know one to reactivate it after it's been deactivated and then one to use it to be able so it's two dice get me three goods but you know, it gives me a variety of goods and um, you know normally it takes me three dice to get three goods so you know what what the heck I am going to buy a bazaar so that's going to cost or I'll build a bazaar I should say it's going to cost me my ore and my lumber so I go in and put them back in the supply and again now I can put this wherever I want and let's just say I do not want to go the way of warfare I'm just going to go on ahead and cover up this militia I now I, I'm less likely to build a strong militia in the future I'm going for a peaceful way and that was it now at the end of my turn I have to reroll all my dice and you know apply them wherever they're supposed to go red five uh, and there we go and oops and so, I'm just now, while it's somebody else's turn, I'm going to sit and think about, right, well, okay, I've got two stone and an ore, maybe that means, oh, and when I built something, a new card comes out, a little town hall, which requires, well, it requires quite a bit to build, but that means it's a really good building, obviously. So I can be thinking for my next turn, what is it I'm going to do with these dice? Am I going to use all these things? Am I going to get rid of a die to move another die to another place? You know, like for instance, I, unfortunately, I didn't get to activate my bazaar, but I could give up two dice to move this over twice so that I could get my bazaar if I wanted to. Oh, that'd be pretty expensive. But anyway, so that was it. And now there's one other thing. At the end of my turn, I can only store up to one of each of the three goods. So if I had two stone at the end of my turn, I'd have to toss one of them. Now as it is, I've only got one stone left. I've got my one victory point and my one hourglass. And that was it. That was my whole turn. Now it is Jen's turn. And of course, all this time, Jen would have been thinking about what she's doing, but I haven't really thought about it very much. But you know what? I Okay, right off the bat, I know what Jen's going to do. Jen is going to, let's see, she could get a lumber, a stone, and a uh, thing, or a, an ore. But Jen is going to pay this die not to get stone out of her mountain, but instead to be able to move off of this small house, so she's giving up a victory point, to move over here to militia. Now Jen has two militia. All right, so she will also get some ore and some wood. Some ore and some wood. And now she will use these two militia cards for their purpose. So Jen has two army power. Right, so now Jen has used all her dice. Now, next thing is she has two army power so she can use it. She needs three army power to defeat the weakest bandits, but that's not Jen's target. She's looking over to me and my stone and saying, you know what? She's going to use her two army power to steal my stone. So now Jen's got everything. If Jen had one more army power, she could have disabled my bazaar. Even if a die was on it, ready to be used, Jen could have disabled it. Okay, so that was it. Jen did her military. Now she can build. And like me, I did on my turn, she's got three items, one of each. Although one of them was very ill-gotten gains. And now what is she going to do? Hmm. You know what? Actually, oh. Okay, yeah, Jen's pretty happy with that. She's going to use all three of these because if you've got a player who has, who has a lot of militia and you, know, you, you might be worried about them wanting to use a militia a lot, you don't want to keep a lot of resources lying around because that's just asking to have them stolen. So if you can, you want to use all your stuff every turn. So Jen's going to use all of her stuff to build a watchtower because it requires one of each type. This is worth two points to her at the end of the game. It's an army card. And for me to deactivate it, I would have to attack it with a total strength of four. Now, Jen will put this... Uh, what the heck? Jen will say, To heck with earning victory points. I am replacing this small house with a watchtower. And now, if Jen's die lands on this... Or you know what? Actually, I think Jen will say, To heck with this cave. She's removing that cave. Um, so that 
all of, you know, this line has two military, this line has two military, this line, now there's military up here. So Jen is upping her chance of being able to roll and get more military. So the watchtower, if she activates this, she adds three total military strength, but that military strength can't be used to attack me. It can only be used to attack bandits. So Jen is clearly go, trying to build up a strong military town for herself. So she does build, she has nothing more to build with, so she re-rolls. And unfortunately, she got a white one. Arg! If she got a white two or a white four, she'd probably happily move it over, but she'd have to use two dice to move this over. Let's see, and a red four, a blue five, and a yellow one, and a black one. And that was Jen's first turn. Now we are back over here with me. And what am I going to do? Let's see. Well, again, I could get a I see. So I've got two stone, one lumber, and one ore. Two stone, one lumber, one ore. Oops, and I forgot a new building came out. Wow. If um, I had one more ore, I'd have enough to build this cathedral, which requires two ore, two stone, and one lumber. But I don't quite. Well, I think for starters, I'll go on ahead and get a stone and a stone for those two. Bippity bop. And I... Do I want some lumber and some ore? E, do I? Well, see, that's the thing. If I don't use all this lumber in this ore, it'll be sitting around, and Jen has proven she is prepared to steal it from me. Now, what I'm thinking is I'm going to use the, this two um, stone to build myself a quarry so that I can start getting some more. Um, and what I could do is... You know what? I'm going to use this die to move another die, and I'm going to move off this cave over here to this forest, and so then I'm going to use these two, and that gives me two lumber. So I picked up two lumber and two stone. All right. And now, I don't have any military, so I'm not going to attack. And now I can go on ahead and build. And I don't want to leave. I want to use up all this stuff so Jen can't steal it from me. So I'm going to use two uh, stone to build a quarry, and I'm going to use two lumber to build a lumber mill. All righty. And then I got to decide where am I going to put these two cards. And let's see here. Now, it's interesting. The, the merchant guild is here. And if I get this thing built, it takes two lumber and a stone. And a, if I get this built, when I land on it, well, first of all, I have to deactivate it, so I can pretty much, and I'd have to use another die to reactivate it again. But when I land on this, it would let me get one resource from every harvest card in a given row. Right? Yes, yeah, in a given row. So that probably points me to the fact that I want to put both these in the same row as I would ultimately put this merchant guild so that if I hit, the if I, if I hit these spaces, I get resources. But if I hit the merchant, they both pay out. And if I want to continue to say, you know what, to heck with military. Down with the military. I will replace this militia and this militia. So I'm starting to make a strong resource. And eventually, I want to get the merchant guild so I can put it on this row so that you know, I really can produce a lot in that row. And I'm leaving nothing left over for Jen to steal. And at the end of my turn, I go on ahead and roll. And there's a blue four and a yellow four. Oh, I just missed it. And a white four and a red six and a black four. So that's kind of a bummer. Although, I've got, if I give up two dice, I can move on to my fancy bazaar and on to my fancy lumber mill. So I have an option to you know, make if I want to give up a couple dice. But anyway, we'll worry about that later. Now it is Jen's turn again. And meanwhile, oh, she uh, landed one military. She landed two military. Man, if she had landed this watchtower, she would have one, two, three, four, five. You know what? That's what Jen's going to do. She's going to say, to heck with this stone, to heck with this stone. To be, she's going to use both these to move and move again. And now Jen has one, two, three, four, five. But this three can only be used against bandits. So Jen has a total of five military. She just took out one of the toughest bandits in the game and just scored four points for herself. So right now, um, you know, Jen's got four points. I've got one point, and Jen's also got two from this one building she's built, and I've got I built some more buildings. So right now, Jen is going the way of fighting. I am going the way of building, and there's also the way of trading. But anyway, so that was Jen's turn. Very quick, very simple, and so sets herself up for her next turn. D D D. Oh, and boom, she landed on her watchtower. So she's probably going to want to go to war again. And although she didn't... Hit, oh, oh, yeah, so she's got three plus one. So she could get this level four bandit without having to waste any dice to move around. And then she could still collect some goods, two stone and a wood, to be able to do some building next turn. Next turn is going to be pretty good for her. And then back to moi. Let's see. Well, first of all, um, I didn't hit either of my two spots, but you know what? I did hit the Traveler, and landing on a Traveler means I could pick up this die, and I could re-roll it, and I could hope for a five or a two. Come on, five or two! Or one. Lame. You tra Traveler suck. All right. 
So what am I going to do? Oh, and I've got this one here. Again, I could reroll and hope for a three so I can land in my bazaar. Although, that's the thing. I might re-roll this and then suddenly get a six, and then it'd be too expensive to move the die all the way over to the bazaar. If I just leave this, oops, this was on a, this was on a space four. If I leave this, I could give up a die and move here and get everything. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to, even though I could re-roll, I'm not going to do it. So, that means I'm going to give up one die to get some resources. All right, okay, I'll give up. All right, so right now, I'm picking up stone, 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 and wood. You know what? That's a lot of stone. I think I'll give up this so that I can move this over here. And then I'll say, hooray, I've hit my bazaar, which gives me one, two, three. But the bazaar is also deactivated. Now, if I want, I could say, hey, you know what? This, I'm just going to give up this to reactivate my bazaar so I can use it later. But I probably shouldn't do that right now. Um, because I can't use the bazaar again. And if I reactivate this, Jen on her turn with her military might come over and attack my bazaar. So if anything, I should probably reactivate my bazaar next turn. Although, I can see right now that Jen's got three military, but she can't attack me with it. So, I already know what Jen's doing. I know it's pretty unlikely she would come after me. So, I could go on ahead. Let's see, well, I need to be thinking about what do I want to build with this. Although, actually, so I've just gotten one of each. If I get another stone and another wood, Oh, but if I could get another ore, I could actually do a trade and get five points on a trade ship. But remember, I want this merchant guild, right? Uh, so I could put it on the same row as these things. And that requires two, uh, stone and ore, which I have, and two lumber. So I'm definitely going to grab this lumber. So that's it. I can now build the merchant guild. But what am I going to do with these other two? Do I want two more stone? I could get two more stone to build another quarry and put it on this row so that my merchant guild is even more powerful. That's pretty interesting. Um, or, let's see, what else would I do with two stone? Or I could get two stone and just hold it and hope that Jen won't steal it from me because she's got bigger fish to fry. She'd want to go after these bandits instead of after little old me. If I, you know, because, you know, to build some of these things that are really expensive, you might need to save up a little while. Now, remember, I could also just say to heck with this and get another hourglass. So I have two hourglasses, which means I can get one good of any choice, increase my strength by one, or... And now this is pretty nasty. If, you know... Jen stole my stuff. If I wanted revenge, I could say, hey, you know what? To heck with this stone. I'm going to get another hourglass. And then I could use the two hourglass to force Jen to re-roll this. And hopefully, she won't get to use her watchtower, which she's so excited about because it's her best building and it's going to let her get a lot of points. So I could do that as well. That is also a viable option. So do I do that? Do I strike and slow her down? Because, you know, I mean, at the very least, she's going to get two points or she's going to get at least four points or three points, maybe four points. She could run away with it. And now, this game is going to keep playing until one of several things happens. We've completely emptied out this deck. We have completely gotten rid of all the bandits, or we've, gotten, we've emptied out two of the three trade ship piles, or one player has completely filled up two rows on their board. And then they can optionally end it if they want. So, you know, right now, Jen could just keep trying to attack as fast as possible, wipe out these bandits as quick as she can, scoring a lot of points, while I'm still just getting my engine going before I can actually really do anything good with my... and, and trigger the end of the game before I can catch up, because building takes a while to really get going. Jen can go really quick, so I've got to bear that in mind. It might make sense. It might be my best move, because I'm already going to get a really good building this turn. Um... And let's see, and if I do that, I mean, I'd be left with a single stone, which, will, which I'll just have to store and hope Jen doesn't steal it. But what the heck, let's just go on ahead and do that. I'm going to get my second hourglass, and then I'm going to spend both hourglasses. Now, this is a bit of a gamble, too. I say, honey, you've got to re-roll your watchtower. If she rolls a three again, or heck, a two or a four, I haven't really slowed her down that much. But if she rolls a six, she'll be pissed. Or two. Well, okay. So now Jen's going to have to throw a die away to get that. So, so I basically spent a die to make her spend a die. But anyway, and then I've kindly got this. So, uh, now, I, I can't use this to get another hourglass because you only get one hourglass per turn. So I'll just go on ahead and use this to get some stone. All right, and so now, I don't have any military, but I do have some buying power, so I'm going to buy this merchant guild. And I will replace my mountain with that because, heck, I'm already making two stone. I don't need to be making more stone. So, from now on, if I land on the merchant guild, I would activate this quarry and this lumber mill. So this is becoming a much stronger uh, row for me. And that cost me, what, two, one, and one. And this building gives me three victory points as well. Okay, so that was my turn. At the end of my turn, I re-roll. And I get a yellow three. Come on, yellow. I've got three good buildings there. And you give me that? Oh, you hate me. And I see a blue two and a six and a red 
three, which means I'll be able to re-roll that later. I get two victory points. That's not bad. And some stone and some ore, so I could just build something more like this grand statue. But, but anyway, we'll worry about that on my next turn. Now it's Jen's turn again. And she does curse the fates because I have made her spend a die so she can get her watchtower back up and act it. Act it. And so her watchtower is three plus one is four. That means she's going to be able to take out these bandits in a minute. So she's got four. So she's basically eyeballing those bandits. And let's see. And so now, okay, she could get herself two stone or a stone and a wood. Or she could give herself some hourglasses or other stuff, but a stone and a wood would let her build, well, none of these particular buildings. But if she, um, if she used the uh, wood to move over to her watchtower, then she could get two stone to build a quarry. But before she builds her quarry, she's got two stone. And now she will use her four to take out these bandits, and she just got three points. And, you know, she's all uh, right. And so she's got her two stone. She'll use those two stone to get herself a quarry, and she will just upgrade her existing mountain with a quarry. She could have put that anywhere, but all right, so she'll just go with that, and then she rerolls, and she gets a black four, and a, a blue three, and a yellow five, and a red six, and boom, right on the watchtower again. She's very happy about that. And now it's back to me, back to my turn. And at least she didn't steal my um, stone, so I'm happy about that. But again, I could see that it was, I mean, it would have been a stretch for her to do that, to steal it. Actually, it was interesting. That was another reason to hit her watchtower, because if I hadn't, she might have used her watchtower to do a bandits and then just gotten herself another quick militia to steal my stone. So by me giving up a die to force her to have to spend a die here, it made it less likely she was going to steal my stuff. Right, so do I just want to get two points and some goods? Oh, well, first of all, let's re-roll this die and see what we get. We get some more stone. So I could get two stone and ore. I already have a stone and some victory points. So that's uh, three stone and some ore. If I could get another ore, two stone and two ore would let me get this mint, which means all Sawbones locations, which is pretty much every single space that generates stuff, provides an additional resource when used. Boom. That's big news. I would definitely like to do that. How can I do that? Well, I can do it thusly. I will say to heck with you, victory point, so that I can say to heck with you, stone, and move over here. And then I will get two ore. Bippity bop. And I will get another stone. Bippity bop. And hey, you know what? What the heck? I'll just get a victory point. Victory points are good, right? That's how you get victory. And I have no military because I don't like military. And I have two and two, so I am building the mint, which is worth three points by itself, and it's going to be tough for Jen to disable it, but all saw locations provide an additional resource when used. That is huge. Jen cannot let that go. If she gets five military, she has to hit this thing. Plus, when she hits it, she'll get three victory points. She could just hit this over and over and over again and stop me from being able to use my super production. Now, where do I want to put this mint? I don't want to put it on this row because I just want to put other producers so that if I hit the Merchant Guild, all these spaces could produce so that I could start maybe getting up to building the super trade ship. Where am I going to put this? I'll cover up another militia because I just don't want to fight. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I'm a builder, not a fighter, really. So let's see what we get. Um, a yellow one. Oh, my Merchant Guild! Hooray! And a red one. And a white two. And a black three. And a blue one. So there we go. And my Merchant Guild has been hit, so it's going to get deactivated, but it's going to generate a stone and a wood for me. And then another stone, another ore, another lumber, and wow! Oh my gosh! I'll probably have enough if I want to do a trade ship, or I could build another really cool building, etc., etc. And you know what? I think I'm going to stop right there, because hopefully you guys have a pretty good idea of what Dice City is all about. And um, so, uh, now would be the time for you to go on ahead and hit the little I up in the top right corner of the screen, so you could go to Final Thoughts, or you could go to Extended Playthrough, and I'll play through a few more rounds, although you've pretty much got the idea. The game just gets bigger and more rich and robust as you get more and more special buildings, and you hit them, and you get... I mean, you get all kinds... There's all kinds of crazy buildings that do all kinds of really interesting things, goods conversion and whatnot, or you can just keep focusing on, you know, etc, etc. But extended play or final thoughts, your choice. Hit the little I in five, four, three, two, one.